Hi, I'm Tristan Hutton. I'm a singer songwriter and producer from the UK, and I'm here to introduce you to the state of the art sampler feature of Soundbridge 2.8.0. Let's go. This is my As any producer will tell you, sampling is fundamental to creating the building blocks of our music. And Soundbridge have just released their state-of-the-art sampler. So I thought I'd put it to the test here in my home studio on one of my upcoming singles. Okay, let's jump into Soundbridge. The new sampler is now built into every MIDI track. So once you select your MIDI track, you'll see two buttons at the bottom here. The MIDI button will keep it in the MIDI edit window and the other will take you to the sampler. The sampler works like any other VST instrument, and you can see it here in the insert rack on the right-hand side. So to demonstrate the sampler, I'm gonna use some really high-quality samples straight from the Soundbridge 1000 Sample Sound Bank, which is available via the Soundbridge website for premium members. But another really interesting application here is that all the sampler presets can be saved to allow the samples we create to be distributed. So to get started, I'm going to drag and drop some samples in like so. And you can see some sample tabs appearing here at the top of the sample window. The sampler can take up to 64 sample tracks and I can also reorder them by dragging them around and I can rename or recolor them by simply right clicking. The sampler presets can be exported, and this will save all the samples editing and their settings. In order to do this, all I have to do is click Plugin Presets here in the sampler, then save as your chosen name, like so, then select it and export it to your chosen location. In this case, you can see that it has exported to my desktop and saved as a Soundbridge plugin preset. So once I've added those samples, I can then go into a specific sample and I can begin manipulating that sample using various editing methods. Let me show you. The first setting you can adjust is the root note of that sample. And you can also set up the note range that that sample will be played within on your MIDI keyboard here. The pitch of the sample can be adjusted by semitones or scents by inserting the relevant settings here. And over here you have the velocity range for your minimum and maximum velocity values. So this will also affect the MIDI track velocity. And you can see here that the velocity to volume rate knob is available, despite the envelope here not being turned on. We can also adjust gain or panning for the selected sample here, as well as adjust the pitch algorithm, and we can even reverse the sample, like so. Okay, next up is the envelope section. So here we have the amp, filter, and pitch envelopes, and you can toggle these on and off, like so. If I want to use the filter envelope, I'll need to select a filter type up here, and I can control the frequency or cue for that specific filter type as well. I can control the various settings by either moving the points within the audio view or by using these knobs here. Underneath here we have the convexity control switches, which means we can adjust the convexity of the attack, decay and release like you see here. And if we want to adjust the pitch settings here, we just need to ensure the sound touch or ST algorithm is selected above, like so. I could also slice up my samples to create individual sample segments. So you can see here that I have sliced up sample two, which has in turn created sample three, four, and five when I hover over them. And just keep in mind that the draw tool must be enabled in order to draw slice points. One of the most powerful features of the new Soundbridge sampler 
is our ability to choose up to six different playback styles or sample cycles for our samples. So let's jump back into the project and I'll show you what I mean. I can select the playback style for my samples by hitting this button here. The playback style that I've selected at the moment is the single sample playback, which means only the selected sample will be played. If I toggle to forward cycling playback, it will play one after the other in the order shown here. So the playback modes in the order you see here are random cycling, forward cycling, backward cycling, forward backward cycling, single sample and layered samples. The fantastic benefit of layered sampling is that it allows us to actually stack samples together to create melodic arrangements and even chords. If we open up the sampler on this guitar MIDI track here, you can see that I've dragged just one sample into the sampler multiple times and manipulated the pitch of each sample to create a simple chord when the playback mode is selected as layered samples. And the final two controls we have here are the re-trigger control and the threshold controls. The re-trigger modes I'll go through now are only available for forward, backward and forward-backward cycling modes. And the threshold feature, which I'll go through, is only available for forward, backward, forward-backward and random cycling modes. If the re-trigger is toggled off, then the sampler won't re-trigger the order of a sample cycling mode. We can also set it to re-trigger the playhead and the selected loop or re-trigger just the playhead, or re-trigger just the loop. The sample change threshold knob shown here means I can adjust how long the current sample remains active before switching to the next sample in the cycle. And finally, the silence active notes button allows me to stop all currently playing samples. Well, I hope that gives you a useful overview of the main sampler features of Soundbridge 2.8.0. There have been loads of other upgrades to the door as well, so be sure to check out the release notes, which are linked to the video description down below. I'm going to leave you with a track that I created in Soundbridge using the sampling methods we've looked at today. Thanks for joining me in my home studio, and I'll see you again soon.